did receive recent support in the said legacy of destruction, which is fantastic. And apparently the support was good enough to now make the deck being good enough to be free and O in this tournament. Elias on the top being the pilot. Also, uh, fun fact, Robert, uh, you may know his face because he piloted Mikanko into the top cut of YCS Dortmund, but he actually is from the UK and he's the only UK player attending for this tournament this weekend. And he brought an interesting deck as well, to be fair. Yes, there is Snake Eyes cards, but usually you don't pair up the Snake Eye cards with Horus cards. And look at that, there even is a Fury and King Regulus in his deck. That is actually some wild stuff. And um, I'm excited to see where all of this gets him. And I'm also like, I'm. I'm Excited for this one for multiple reasons. I want to see what Valmonica does. I want to see what Robert has cooked here because I have never seen that combination of cards. And now Elias takes a breath. It's like, oof, yeah, also the Snake Eye Ash. And uh, to me, it looks like Robert has all the tools that he needs. And he's kind of smiling. He's enjoying himself searching Snake Eye Poplar here. And, yep, nothing there to stop him just yet. In the past... Pendulum decks usually were struggling to include uh, cards like Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, Effect Veiler. They were not having a whole lot of space for those hand interactions. But let me tell you, for the 41-card uh, Valmonica deck that Elias brought here, he did actually uh, find quite some space to include those cards. And I think that may be uh, his recipe for success. And there is the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, for example. And it is going to be used right there on the second effect of Snake Eye Ash. We send the Snake Eye, the new Snake Eye main deck monster alongside the Snake Eye Ash, and yeah, that was stopped. Oh, but that is also a good way to stop stuff as Triple Tactic Talent is being activated by Robert. And look at that, Robert is not even reading the two Valmonica cards that are there in the hand of Elias. So maybe Robert actually knows what the Valmonica cards do. And I mean, he played Mikanko at YC's Dortmund where nobody was playing it. He was like one of the first players that actually brought it. So maybe he's just... He knows what the more niche decks in the format can do, and maybe he considered himself uh, he considered himself to bring that deck. But like, first of all, Triple Tactic Talons was used to get rid of that Nibiru from hand. That is definitely not bad. But Elias sits there with a couple of Valmonica cards in his hand, and maybe that is all he needs. Who knows? But Robert is going to use the effect of his King Sarcophagus there, sending him Sati to the graveyard. Okay, yep, we bring back what I like about the Horus engine, and maybe that is uh, the recipe to success here so far for Robert. Uh, for Robert. Um, it does actually provide you with the ability to bring a lot of monsters to the field. So even though you got interrupted here with that Ash Blossom at a pretty crucial timing, you can just go for the Horus cards, summon out a monster, as we see, go into Hita, use the opponent's Ash Blossom, summon out the Promethean Princess, now bring back one of our monsters and still keep on going. So, oh yeah, look, we did not even use the on-field effect of Snake Eye Oak to bring back a monster. Neither did we use the effect of Snake Eye Oak to summon from the deck. So I think even though that Ash Blossom denied the Snake Eye Flamberge in the beginning, we still might get there, honestly. Ooh, and look at that. For the first time now this weekend, we see the usage of the Snake Idea Belster, newly added card to the deck in Legacy of Destruction, and saying, while this card is a continuous spell, you can target one fire monster in your graveyard, except Snake Idea Belster, place it, uh, face up in its owner's spell and trap zone, and if you do, you can just special some of this card out. So look at that, we traded one of our monsters there in the graveyard to put it into the spell and trap zone, and in the meantime, we brought out another monster to the field, which is actually just very, very, very strong. I'm still wondering about that uh, about that Regulus there, though. That one is kind of surprising me. I didn't expect Regulus, because I was already surprised when I saw his deck in general deciding to run the Horus cards together with the Snake Eye cards. And now there is a Regulus sitting there as well, which I still... I'm Maybe you guys at home can help me out with that, but I'm struggling to find usage for it, honestly. Like, what even... Are the Horus monsters partly machine monsters? It must be, right? That must be the way to, to go for that.
And even though we got stopped once, we still go strong. Relinquished Anima is coming to the field here. Being the Link 1 summon of choice. It's just like this deck is bringing monsters to the field non-stop. So many of them. And I mean, hear me out. That, uh, that uh, Furion King Regulus there in the spell and trap zone actually is fantastic because you can summon out Regulus on the opponent's turn now. That is very, very, very strong. We go for Selene. And yeah, we, we have a way in this deck to convert all of those monsters into success. Because we can just go Selene, we can use Selene and the Witch to go into Appaloosa. And that makes Selene, like Selene was strong already before the introduction of Snake Idea Belster. But now there is an additional spell cast in the deck, making the card even more viable, making it uh, able to be summoned even more. So, not gonna lie, through an Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, putting up this looks really strong. And we did not even bring back Emsadi yet with the King Sarcophagus. Not even done yet. And that's the pass there. Yeah, for the people wondering how that Regulus even got into the Sparrow Trap Zone, you can target whatever card you want with Snake Eye Flamberge uh, in the graveyard and put it into the Sparrow Trap Zone. And so our way of doing that there was just um, doing it through the Snake Eye Flamberge. Okay, and now over to the Valmonicas. So Elias did not scoop this one up here. He's still confident that going second he can do it with his... I'm, I'm just assuming it is one of his favorite decks when he decided to bring it here to this tournament. And he starts things off with the field spell Valmonica, the Agophological Voice. <laughs> I, I almost got that one right, I hope. But yeah, we just... Uh, when we activate that card, can add one Valmonica monster from our deck to hand. So... Normal summon we go. And Robert has to think now, because on this normal summon, he could trigger the effect of his field spell of the temple, but he doesn't do that. But instead, he decides to use the effect of Apollosa, negating. And interestingly enough, as far as I remember, maybe I'm misremembering, but I think we also saw a triple tactic talents in the hand of Elias when we looked into his hand. Okay, there comes SP. SP is going to take care of the Valmonica monster on the field, which should have been the Selitris Valmonica. It does very much look like it. I mean, actually, there isn't that many main deck monsters for Valmonica in the first place. Like, for the main deck, the deck, I think, has three main deck monsters in total. Let me check his deck list real quick. Yeah, like, monster-wise, there aren't that many, but the spell cards are making the entire deck so powerful. And okay, Elias is giving Robert a quick lesson on the next Valmonica card that he's activating. And that should be Valmonica Skelta there. And you can decide one of the two effects to use. And uh, if you have a card in your Pendulum Zone, your opponent chooses the effect. So you can either gain 500 life points, then you can place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck and draw two cards, which is great. Draw power, and that is apparently what we're using. Or you take 500 damage, then you can add one, Valmon one Valmonica spell from your deck to your hand. So, okay. And there is one of the other monsters that we play. And this is, uh, of course, the Pendulum Monster, Angelo Valmonica. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remembered correctly. There was Triple Tactic Talents in his hand, and there still is, and we use it to draw two more cards. Elias trying to find the puzzle pieces to put it together here, not finding them, though. I Calling want to see it. I'm down to learn, because I'm not a Valmonica expert just yet, but hopefully I become by watching this turn here from Elias. So let's get into the action of this second game here between Robert and Elias. So, considering his options, we start with the field spell again. Searching out another card. And this time, yep, it's the same search target that we went for in the last game. We, I think we saw quite a bit of non-engine actually there in his uh, opening hand. So, one good thing I can tell you about piloting those decks, those of the meta, of the map decks, is that your opponents usually struggle to deal with them. Usually they don't really know how to handle them because they have never faced this deck before. I personally, I gotta say, like, 
not even at locals I have faced Valmonica. There are very few of these uh, duelists, so it's even better that the deck is now more on the radar with its recent um, with its recent support in Legacy of Destruction, and uh, therefore it's great to see whether this can develop into a big turn here. So, okay, activating the next spell. So yeah, as I said in game number one, this was of course the Salatrius Valmonica, and we now also got that Valmonica in the tower there into the Spurn Trap Zone. Oh, we wanted to use Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, but the one-off caught by the Grave coming in clutch and therefore denying that Ash Blossom to resolve. And where do we go with this? Yes, we are searching now for Angelo Valmonica. Robert also just sitting there learning probably, as we do here in chat. Now two pendulum scales have been assembled, so we can use the pendulum mechanic to, to pendulum summon out from our extra deck again, the Daimono Di Valmonica. So all three of the main deck monsters have now, be, have now been found. And we get to search out a copy of... That looked like this, uh, this Ammonia to me. Yep, that one is also immediately going to be activated. And this Ammonia allows you to place one resonance counter on one card in your pendulum zone, and uh, then you can apply one of the effects. Either gain 500 life points, then you can add one of your banished Valmonica cards to your hand, or take 500 life points damage, and then you can uh, add one Valmonica card from your graveyard to your hand instead. Okay, but we're obviously not done yet. We do go for an Exceed Summon there, and that is going to be Gallant Granite. Okay, so we are searching for a rock here, apparently. Generic Rank 4, which allows us to search out Nibiru from our deck. Okay, interesting setup. Getting that Nibiru there as a pretty good weapon, of course, against the um, Snake Eye Horror deck, because as we just saw in game number one, that deck is relentless in summoning monsters. It keeps on summoning, keeps on going, doesn't stop at any point. And now, to me, that looks like Drualuma, the Monikan Heaven Hallow. And that is actually, it's completely generic, which is uh, insane to me because we just used that Gallant Granite. Oh wait, was it? Oh, it may have been the other one. Oh, oh no, wait. It's actually, it's also, it's also a Link one, but it was the other one, the one that was. Uh, um, yeah, g give me a second. This one actually was Cebu Fera, the Monican Hollow Heathen. Yeah, as I said, generic Link one. You can basically play that in whatever, and he just linked off the Gallant Granite to bring out the Cebu Fera. And, wow, <laughs> that is not really a classic Pendulum end field. Yes, we do see Pendulum Scales being part of our end field here. But besides that, there's only one monster on the field. Usually with Almonicas, or not usually with Pendulum decks, it was always the case that you would go for a lot of monsters. You would summon out a really big combo field. But here, Elias took it kind of minimalistic, just having one monster that set Sebufera as his only monster on the field, and then that being upped with uh, being backed up by three set cards. And we, of course, cannot forget that there was an Ibiru being searched in the process. So interesting setup here and I'm excited to see whether this is going to be enough because uh, Cebu Fera has a protection effect saying if a card you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect you can remove free resonance counters from your pendulum zone instead and we see there is free counters on one of his scales there okay we placed the new snake eye monster from the deck with the field spell that is now Definitely a way to do things, and we activate original Sinful Spoils, bringing out Snake Eye Ash, using the effect of Snake Eye Ash now too. Grabbing ourselves a copy of Snake Eye Oak. Okay, Snake Eye Oak is in hand. But like, the thing is, the more monsters we summon, 
the more we are playing into our own destiny of Nibiru, the primal being. But Elias says, hey, I'm going to use these two monsters that you have for the moment, fuse them away with super polymerization and make a Garura out of it. Okay, so first of all, okay, because we discarded Celetris, we can trigger it in the graveyard apparently. And yeah, it is kind of sent to the graveyard, even through cost of super polymerization. And you have two Valmonica cards in your Pendulum Zones, you can just easily add it back to your hand. So that's actually pretty nice. So we put the Snake Idea Belster into the Spell and Trap Zone there. Actually, funnily enough, into the Pendulum Zone even. <laughs> so we're, we're playing a Pendulum Mirror now, ladies and gentlemen. And okay, we just use that effect of Wanted in the Graveyard. Banishing it, targeting the original Sinful Spoils to get a free draw here. There we go. But yeah, still that factor of Nibiru being in the room, being in the head of Robert. He knows it's there. And I, I mean, Nibiru in general is already tough when you have to face it, when it comes down unexpected. But when you know it's there, it's, it's kind of, it's so tough to handle because you just know it's there and... You have to figure out a way how to deal with it. And is there even a way how to play around that set Nibiru here? I'm not sure, honestly. I am very much not sure. But first of all, we're going to trigger the effect of Snake Eye Diabelsta in the Spell and Trap Zone to bring it out, put Snake Eye Ash into the Spell and Trap Zone. Instead, there comes Diabelsta, which now is sending and setting as well. Okay. So we have two level 7 monsters now on the field. Is he now also going to start uh, Exceed Summoning with his deck here? Looking at his extra deck, he has Exceed Monsters in there. He has Zombie Vampire and Zagres as well, which is interesting. Oh, now I can understand the regulars. We are playing Sagas in our extra deck, being able to search out the regulars. Okay, it now all makes sense. But we are finding another piece of interruption here, and that is while Monica followed Rhythm here. And you can, again, apply one effect, but if you control... Uh, well, Monica Link Monster, you can actually apply both effects. And you can gain 500 life points, then you can destroy one spell trap card on the field. We did that. Or or, or, or both. In that case, we do it both. Uh, take 500 damage, then you can return one monster from the field to the hand. So that Snake Idea Bellstar is gone. King Sarcophric is being activated now, though. That's strong, but okay, immediately being met by the response of Sebu Farah. And let me tell you, sportsmanship, handshake before game number three. Let's get into this. Robert again now leading into this. Ooh, and I think, I think I saw Joel Lockbird there in the opening hand of Elias, which was the pure version of Snake Eyes. I don't like that much, but... Against the version that we're seeing here from Robert, it might actually be quite impactful. And now, when Robert is starting off with Snake Eye Ash, searching Snake Eye Poplar, activating the effect of Snake Eye Poplar, it is the perfect timing to drop that Droll and Lockbird to the graveyard, apply its effect, denying the effect of Snake Eye Poplar. Meaning, whatever we wanted to search with that is not going to be searched here. And we see no immediate triple tactic talent. So I'm assuming this game, contrary to game number one, we do not have that available to us. But there comes the link one into Anima. We use Snake Eye Ash and the Poplar that put itself into the Spell and Trap Zone, making an Oak or a Flambridge Dragon. What are we making out of it? We used the effect, sent both to the graveyard, and we summon out Snake Eye Oak. Snake Eye Oak now, of course, using its effect, bringing back the... Snake Eye Ash, Snake Eye Oak now using its other effect, sending itself and the Anima, and now I think we're going to get that Snake Eye Flamberge Dragon. Yes. We're done with Pyros, we want to summon some dragons now. And that is a very powerful dragon with a very, po very powerful graveyard effect, of course. And that is going to come into place in just a second, being linked off here. Usually that would mean IP Mascarena is coming as the Link 2 of choice, and it's also the Link 2 of our choice here. And now Flamberge, when it goes to the graveyard, can bring back two level 1 fire monsters, of course. We go for Snake Eye Ash and Snake Eye Poplar, and I'm pretty sure we're far away from being done here yet. We are pretty far away from being done just yet. Okay, 
What's next, though? Usually, the next step here in the turn would be to go uh, to go ahead and summon out the Promethean Princess. Oh, and we do also have access to the Horrors engine. So, normally, Elias tried to prevent cards like Emsetti. And, you know, there was Emsetti in his hand as well, as we just see. Because, like, after using Drone and Lockbird on... Uh, the Poplar or before the Poplar could surge means a card like Imsedi in the hand of Robert could not be activated anymore. But Robert, quite frankly, didn't really care because he had the King Sarcophagus already in his opening hand. And he could even now discard the Imsedi, send the Happy, meaning he now even has two Horus Monsters in his graveyard. So that draw on Lockbird in theory could have been strong, but here against this specific hand of Robert, it's not really doing that much. That is now the anticipated by myself Promethean Princess coming to the field. We bring back the Flamberge. Flamberge puts VIP Mascarena into the Sparn Trap zone. In game one, it was like a wild setup that Robert went for. We put the regulars into the Sparn Trap zone for the Flamberge. We uh, summoned IP and let it on the field. Um, so it was definitely an unusual setup, but this one looks more classic. It looks more like the standard Snake Eye field. And therefore, um, maybe Elias is more prepared for what's coming here. We are linking off these two. We go into Hita. Okay. So that's interesting. Now, we had to link off the Promethean Princess to be able to go into our Horus cards. But we had to only go into Hita. Okay, Hita and the Msedi are now going to make place for Selene. Selene brings back the Msedi, which... Nicely enough, is a spellcaster as well. So the, the synergy between the two engines now is even more appealing to me. I think Robert, honestly, might have cooked a good recipe here for this event because I like the synergy between the horrors and the Snake Eye cards. Maybe no one really fully considered this yet. I think I saw it here and there, but not uh, to a big degree. But I do like it a lot. And I think Robert, with his performance here, is going to be a good candidate to perform well. But first of all, it is on Elias now. And Elias is going to immediately summon out Kashtira Fenrir first thing in the main phase. And Robert immediately being confronted with the question, do we just use the Promethean Princess effect in the graveyard? Immediately on the special summon of that Kashtira Fenrir. I could see it, honestly, because that Fenrir is going to make trouble eventually. But we decide against it and we allow Elias to use the search effect of Kashtira Fenrir here instead. Searching out a second copy of Kashtira Fenrir. And that's it. So no Apollosa was used on this. No Princess was used on it either. Robert so far carefully holding his interruptions, I want to say. Maybe playing around triple tactic talents. We saw that talents uh, in Elias' uh, hand in game number one. So maybe he just uh, tries to figure out a way to, to withstand Elias without using monster effects. But when I look at the field of Robert, he this time does not have the field spell. So he has no access to that IP Mascarena other than using the effect of Snake Eye Flamberge. And therefore, I think it's going to be tough to play without monster effects here on our opponent's main phase. So, Robert really going into the tank there. You can see his hat moving down, trying to find a comfortable position to think, trying to figure this situation out. That's what I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! Sometimes it's just like a big puzzle in your hat that you have to fit that you have to figure out, and it looks like Elias is going into the battle phase. Indeed. Indeed. Robert allowed Elias to get into the battle phase here. Probably really just trying to play around that Nibiru there. Uh, not Nibiru, trying to play around that triple tactic talents. And now, Elias doing the first damage here in game number three. We see the Kashtira Fenrir running over the Apollosa. And that means as Kashtira Fenrir, oh, look at that, triple tactics thrust being activated. So, ooh, okay, now we can make some, we can have an explanation for that. So the situation, was that Elias tried to... Ooh, okay, uh, Elias tried to use the effect of Kashtira Fenrir on the Apollosa that was negated with Apollosa, and then Kashtira Fenrir ran over the Apollosa, meaning the Apollosa had 800 attack points, and therefore we did a total of 1,600 damage. 
A triple tactics thrust in theory huge. In practice, though, was met by Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. What's next? We do try to bring out. I think we do. Okay, we do try to use the effect of Snake Eye Flamberge to bring out that IP Mascarena using. Okay, that could turn out interesting. We send the Fenrir from our hand to negate the Flamberge. What's next, though? Do we have more stuff to play with? Do we have a Monica engine to go into? Oh, we had the tactics all the way. Robert was trying to play around triple tactic talents. But he didn't manage to do so in the end. We drew into terraforming. Okay, Valmonica comes in. Valmonica is here. Valmonica is a contender in this game three. Elias absolutely being in this game now. Activating the field spell. Searching himself again, the monster that he searched every single time with that field spell. I think we might still be able to come up with a pretty decent turn here as Robert already used all of his interruption. He's not going to be able to get that IP Mascarina there out of the Spell and Trap Zone. He did already use his Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. The Appaloosa, gone. So we see Elias now being able to just go off as he likes. He drew the cards he needed there with the Triple Tactic Talents. We activated Von Monica Invisor now. We are now also going to activate the effect of Angelo Von Monica. And we therefore discard, I think we discarded a second copy of Triple Tactics Thrust, indeed. And we take Daimono Valmonica from our deck and place this card and also the Daimono into the, spell, uh, into the Pendulum Zones. Let's go. So we have Pendulum Zones ready now as well. Elias is just going off. He does not stop here. I love this. Valmonica may be our sleeper deck for the tournament. 3-0 currently and now working his way into this match as well. Maybe making it a potential 4-0. He's currently ahead in life points. But I think he also just used, uh, yeah, he just also used the spell card now, and all the spell cards kind of um, paying life points or making you gain life points. And therefore, yeah, we paid, we paid that. Okay, so Elias, okay. We are just going to get that Flamberge Dragon and we are going to use it for us. Paying another 500 though. I mean, we're still ahead on life points, but barely. But we are now just linking off. We are summoning out the same link monster than we did last game. Sebu Fera. Last game was part of our final setup on the field and now we get to summon it out quite early. And even though it did not look like a big combo deck last turn, now all of a sudden we're flooding the field with monsters. We are searching for the trap. I think this time it is a different trap actually. This time we're going to search out... Oh wait, no, it is the same one. This is again Valmonica followed Rhythm. And we are following the Rhythm of this game using both of our rank... Uh, both of our... Level 4 monsters to go into Abyss Dweller. I gotta admit, I have not seen Abyss Dweller in a while. But of course, this is a good deck against the Snake Eye strategy as it can deny the reborn effect of Snake Eye Flamberge Dragon. Pendulums are back, everyone. And Elias is bringing them maybe to a victory here in this round number 4 featured match. And maybe even further than that. Okay, we're linking off the Flambridge now. Now it's safe to link off the Flambridge because we do not trigger the graveyard effect anymore due to that Abyss Dweller. And we go, okay, we do not go into... Okay, it is IP Mascarena. For a second I thought that SP uh, is not going to do a whole lot. IP Mascarena seems a lot better. So the setup here, honestly, really, really good. We have an answer to the King Sarcophagus with the Valmonica followed rhythm that we searched. And we have so much more than that on top of it. <laughs> Dweller is absolutely back and this is going to be now the turn of Robert. Robert down in life points, but barely. Elias actually now finally down to 6,500 life points. He had to give up quite a few for his own effects. Okay, as Suggested we're immediately going to go after that King Sarcophagus with Valmonica followed rhythm. It is gone. 
But we do gain 500 life points for that. That is one of the applications of Valmonica followed rhythm. And Elias just sitting there, leaning back, being kind of chill. He definitely showed us what that Valmonica deck now is capable of. So he already delivered for the crowd. He already delivered for you guys at home. But is he also going to deliver for himself here? Is this going to be enough to make himself the winner of this round four featured match? So, oh, Elias thinking about whether to use the effect of IP. Checking quickly what the options in his extra deck are. Okay, he already decided. That was the announcement of the effect. We go for the SP. SP is going to be used banishing Snake Eye Poplar. Now also immediately going to use the effect. And that is the handshake we see.